This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Adriana Michelle. Thank you very much for joining us. We have tried so many times in between uh, <laughs> getting the times wrong and then uh, things just not working out. We've, we finally did it. I yeah, lots of technical issues within the last few weeks. A lot of technical <laughs> issues, but we did it. We did it. So, I, you know, really, I wanted you to be here in February because February was heart month and you've got such a story to tell your own personal story. You've had two heart transplants. Uh, so let's just go back in time a little bit, uh, both ways. Let's pretend it's February is Heart Month because I want people <laughs> to know your story, but go back in time because this started when you were just born. Yeah, yeah. So I was actually born in Smith Falls, um, and 30 hours after birth, I turned blue, um, and obviously I had to go to Chio, where then I was transferred to Sick Kids, um, and so I was born with multiple different heart. Um, diagnosis. So I started having heart surgeries at two days old, 11 days old, three weeks old, and eight months old. Um, all of this resulted in needing a heart transplant. Um, so I went on the list and I waited two years way back then. Um, and thankfully on August or in August of 2000, I got my first heart transplant. Um, and that really gave me uh, the gift of childhood. Um, and so so I had that heart. I was in and out of hospitals a lot um, because I had such a, a compromised immune system. So I was always picking up bugs. So a lot of my childhood was in the walls of hospitals. Um, so so they're very near and dear to my heart. And then when I was 19, um, actually this uh, last week, we um, I celebrate it now because it's we're past that and we're in a better place. Um, but six years ago, when I was 19, I went into cardiogenic shock, which left me in heart failure. Um, and this was at in Ottawa at the Heart Institute. Um, and so I was I was put into a coma. I had an impella. Again, that included another heart surgery, which then led me to another heart transplant. Um, so in this time, um, by 21 years old, I had lived four years in heart failure. I think it was uh, four, five, so five heart surgeries and two heart transplants. Um, so there was there was a lot, a lot of growing up and being in the medical world and living in the medical system quite a bit. Um, and ne next month, April, um, I'll be celebrating four years since my second heart transplant. And since then, um, as you can see, I have recovered. <laughs> um, but I've actually become um, an NLP coach, um, time techniques, EFT, hypnotherapist, life and success coach. And I, I love working with frequency wellness. So now I help others um, really work through their traumas, but using alternative therapeutic methods um, because they have what have like truly, truly helped me a lot. And I just love being able to share my knowledge over the years with other people. I mean, it's just not your knowledge, it's your, your experience as well too, you know, and yeah, who best yeah. to help people through these sort of things than somebody that's had the experience. Some people get into these different fields because they're interested in it, but when you've actually gone through it, it's a whole different element. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's so many, um, like the thing I get a lot is that like, oh, like I can never relate to your story. Like I can, you've been through so much worse than me. And the thing is, is that like, I still experience the same emotional states as, you know, you may experience with other life events. So it's not necessarily that I've been through more or, anything like that. It's the emotional states that life throws at us that puts us into those emotional states. And we have to try and get ourselves out of that, right? That's right. Um, and like we said, like we're, we're kind of going back a month into heart month. So obviously heart month is means so much to me. Um, I've, I've done some work for the Heart Institute and the foundation and Adrian's Army has raised uh, $14,000 one year. Um, and so, so I love doing that kind of work as well. Um, but for me, I found this last year, I really needed to get into um, working on my own traumas on a deeper level because when you go through something like that, like the, um, 
the system and your teams, they prepare you for the worst outcome there was. And in my case, um, it was that I wouldn't be getting a heart and that I would die. Um, and that was like, that was very like cut and dry. Like for me, like that was, that was the way that it was going to be. And you were um, young, you were very young. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, so I would have been from 19 to 21 when that was happening. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I, I just got to start, I, I, I got to know you right before your second heart transplant. So you were coming yeah, here and you were, you know, even then you were, you were supporting people and you were talking about donations and, and what you were going through. And I still remember the day, you were supposed to be here the day you got a heart transplant. Yes, yes I was. <laughs> and uh, you, you didn't have my number, but you, you uh, contacted a mutual friend of mine and said, can you tell Kathy I won't be there for FYI today, I got the call, I'm going to get my heart. And it's like, I'm gonna, I still think of that. And I think I've told you, I've printed that off, it's in my office, up on my wall. You yes, called me to yeah. tell me you're on your way and you were gonna miss an FYI. I so appreciate that, oh my goodness, it was amazing. <laughs> And yeah, so uh, at the time, you know, I had um, like Adrian's Army where we, we were creating organ donation awareness because for me, um, it wasn't necessarily about the money. For me, it was the impact I could make in the time that I had left here. And I wanted it to be left as a legacy for if I didn't get my heart because organ donation um, is always going to be a thing. Like, unfortunately, it's never going to go away. Um, so it, it's really important to get the... Um, the awareness of the importance of organ donation out there. Um, and that will always be a part of my life's mission, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. So yes, February was Heart Month. We're, we're here to tell your story. Thank you very much for sharing it. May is Organ Donation Month. So we'll, we're, when, you're yeah. back as a regular anyways. We'll have a couple of months before then too. But uh, yeah. again, you'll be out there, I'm yeah. sure, in full force in May. Yeah, it's actually April. April oh, April. Is April, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, that's next month. We're gonna talk about this again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate everything you do for everybody. You, you, you're so helpful in your support to everybody. But uh, it's amazing what you've gone through and you're using what you've gone through to help others and you continue to do so. So I appreciate everything you do, Adriana. Uh, thank you so much. That means so much for me to hear. And thank you so much for continuing to have me and share whatever we talk about during the month. It's always always something to look forward to. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. So once again, Adriana, Michelle, thank you for joining us today and sharing your story of two heart transplants.